I recently got 210 miles on the Pacific Crest Trail. Before I started my hike, I actually went to an REI store and bought this Outdoor Research Helium 2 waterproof shell jacket. Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna give you my 200 mile review. Let's go. Hello, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. If hiking and world travel is your kind of thing, then subscribe to this channel for more weekly content just on that. Okay, let's go over my initial thoughts of the OR Helium 2. This thing basically put up with some incredible weather out on the PCT. Put up with snow, ice, hail, rain, uh, torrential downpours, freezing temperatures. Um, it cut the wind incredibly well. It was very waterproof for the most part. I will go into how waterproof it was in a little bit more detail during this video. But overall, yeah, really good at 127 pounds, which in US dollars cost me $159. Um, it's very pricey for a very thin waterproof shell. Uh, they claim it's quite breathable. Um, anyway, I'll go over all of that later on in this video. On their website, it says it weighs in at 180 grams. But on my scales, after 200 miles of usage, uh, it came to this. The materials are Pertex Shield 30 Denier Nylon Ripstop. Uh, I can't find a hydrostatic rating for this material, but I assume it's pretty high. It held up pretty well to some driving rain. If I was going to put a guess on it, it'd probably be anywhere between 10 and 15,000. Uh, outdoor research, if you're watching, can you please let us know in the comment section below uh, exactly what the hydrostatic head rating is for this particular uh, ripstop nylon. The Outdoor Research Helium 2 has a waterproof coating, its seams are taped, it's got a YKK AquaGuard zips which are quite stiff to pull up on but don't get caught on anything on the inside though. It's got a fixed adjustable hood, one external zipped pocket which turns into a pack pocket. It's very small however and I wish I could fit my phone in it, you can literally put maybe your keys or your wallet, some really small things in there but it, it really isn't big enough to put anything substantial or useful in there. It's got fully adjustable hem and cuffs and reflective logos and a carabiner loop. The stitching and pattern cutting on this particular jacket are very good. However, a close inspection on the inside on some of the seams where the seams are taped and they're kind of overlapped, it just doesn't quite reflect the price point. I mean, I know this material is probably quite an expensive material, but I would have hoped that the stitching was a little bit better on some of the seams, especially where they've been taped. On the most part, it's very good, very good quality, but I just would have thought at this price point, 127 quid, it would have been just that little bit better. I'm a 37 inch chest with an 18 inch torso. Uh, I went for a medium, which is the US medium. I'm not sure if they actually differ across different continents. I assume they do, uh, but it fits very well. It's got enough sag to kind of keep it breathable and you know I can kind of move around pretty well in it. Uh, it's not too short. The arms are just about the right length, maybe a little bit too long, but you want a bit of give as it's an active layer. Uh, so yeah, the fit and the comfort are pretty good. However, it does feel a little bit plastic baggy, um, very close to the skin. The coating on the inside kind of sticks to your skin a little bit. I know that in hot, sticky weather on the PZT, uh, when I finally got down into some warmer weather, where I wasn't, if I was just cutting the wind, um, but it was really warm, and this material was really close to the skin, it was actually getting quite sticky and nasty in there. So yeah, not very breathable, but it kind of goes with the territory with any waterproof shell clothing. Incredibly windproof, this thing cuts the wind really, really well. If you, It's very windy, but it's very dry, uh, and you've got, say, an insulated jacket on underneath, and you put this on top, you're gonna be pretty warm and toasty with that insulated jacket on. In terms of waterproofing, for the first, say, 150 miles, this thing was great, but over the course of the Pacific Crest Trail, I did actually notice some kind of water seeping through where the skin was touching the fabric, especially around the cuffs and around the hem, some around the neck, just where, say, I don't know, some static would allow the water to get through on the cuff with some osmosis style kind of seeping through. Elsewhere on the jacket where it was loose, the coating was doing really well. Maybe it's where the coating is actually kind of rubbed off a little bit more around the cuffs and around the places where it's most in contact with the skin. If you look at this cut to 
uh, Bex's shoulder, we were out on a walk and as you can see around the shoulders where I've had the pack on, over time the coating has already started rubbing off after just 200 miles. Uh, again at this price point I would hope that that coating would last a little bit longer but hey ho, uh, for this kind of lightweight material it would last you a through hike if you looked after it and you weren't beating it around and stretching it. Um, but yeah, after 200 miles already, some of the coating was coming off. But hey, again, for something this lightweight, it's kind of worth the trade off. I think for 127 quid, as I said, could have lasted a bit longer on the waterproofing. Yes, it's incredibly lightweight, incredibly strong. It's uh, quite stylish. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wish uh, it would last a bit longer with that coating. This jacket is definitely for minimal ultralight backpackers. They're not looking for something that's gonna keep them warm. They'll already have an insulated jacket that will go on underneath this for that. And they'll also have a mid layer and everything. So they'll be well into their ultralight fast hiking. They're gonna know if they're gonna be walking in some really dry conditions where it doesn't rain that often. For me and many others on the PCT this year, uh, it wasn't the case. This did keep me dry, it did but just around the cuffs and the contact points of your body with the jacket. Um, but yeah, it's a good jacket, lightweight. It's gonna be someone who's serious about hiking. They're gonna to want to take it somewhere long distance and across many miles. It would have been perfect for the PCT this year had I started a bit later, say in the beginning of May where the snow and the rain had completely, if not all but cleared. Overall, this is a really incredible jacket. It's ultra lightweight, it's really packable, it's very strong. I just wish that the uh, waterproof coating on the inside would last a bit longer. A little bit of a stitching issue as well. Um, I really wish this pocket was bigger so that I could put some maps or my phone or something really useful in there. Um, it's just a bit of a kind of wasted bit of weight. Uh, they may as well make a pocket that's uh, going to actually be able to fit stuff, have a few extra grams added to it. Yeah, overall, a pretty good jacket for its price. Campfire question, which waterproof shell are you using and why? Let us know in the comments section below. The Trail Hunter community would love to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you in the next one.